This episode of the Dungeon Cast has been brought to you by Hero Forge. Hero Forge has fully customizable tabletop miniatures with dozens of fantasy races and thousands of parts to choose from. Their easy to use design tool lets you build the perfect miniature online using a fully 3D in-depth character creator right in your web browser. There are plastic and metal options for your custom mini. And Hero Forge even offers downloadable model files for users to 3D print their unique designs at home. Plus, they're constantly expanding the catalog of customization options. They're adding new parts every week and major features like races and custom posing on a regular basis. All you have to do is go to HeroForge.com and you can start designing your custom mini today. It's super easy. And don't forget to check back and visit them every now and again because they're always adding new content. One more time, that's HeroForge.com. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Will. I'm Brian. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, from gallant goliaths to godly guidance. And today, we're covering gold dragons. Well, Brian, it's don't fine. say it. <laughs> we finally come to it. No, the final episode of the Year of the Dragon. Uh, okay, <laughs> I, I have, I yeah. want to pitch this to you later, but I yeah. have one more idea for a dragon episode in the future. Okay, well, because like, I'm sure we're gonna have. Let dragon me pause you there. Now. Like, yeah, just because the Year of the Dragon is ending doesn't mean we're not gonna do like probably four more dragon episodes next year. But yeah, okay, yeah. But yeah, we will announce. Uh, I have an idea for what next year's year of the is going to be, but I'll tell you later. Okay, sweet. <laughs> hey, let's uh, let's honor the year of the dragon by talking about the grandest of all dragons, the gold dragon. Oh, sorry. Let me start over. Also, I love gold. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's out um, of my system for sure. Also, <laughs> can I just tell you how disappointed I am in you for last episode? Not a single hell hydra mention was made. Was made. In the Hydra episode. I mean, you're the... I thought you're the, for sure you were going to drop some Marvel bombs on me. You're the big comic book guy. It's true, but I'm also the guy trying to bring the knowledge here. I just <laughs> like comic books. Like, I, I enjoy the Marvel movies, and I enjoy Marvel <coughs> comics and channels like Comic Pop and stuff like that. Fair enough. Um, but, like, I'm more of I'm more of a, like, just Batman, pretty much. Batman's great. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get into Gold Dragons, Gold. which we said three times already. Yeah. So, Can Ninjas we? and Dragons... Gold dragons, also known as royal dragons or imperial dragons, Didn't are know that. the most powerful of all metallic dragons. I did know that. And some would say the most powerful of all dragons. Royal or imperial <coughs> dragons. So you might hear like somebody <coughs> like hearken to them in that way. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Here, here it was on, a royal dragon I saw. And on forth yeah. were set the imperial dragons. Yeah, oh, shit. Yeah. By which I mean the gold ones. The gold ones. Yeah. You know the ones. Everybody knows. So gold dragons are inherently good beings, famed for their grace, wisdom, and dedication to combating the forces of evil. They are the favored children of their father, Bahamut, king of dragons. And more so than any other dragon, gold dragons actively crusade in his name. Um, gold dragons are sometimes referred to as the paladins of dragonkind. The super saiyans of dragonkind. Indeed. So as with all D&D dragons, gold dragons have a very distinctive and unique look to them. Originally in first edition and even in second edition, gold dragons were depicted as traditional looking like eastern dragons with golden scales rather than the more western medieval types that okay. the other dragons kind of represented. Is that like the lung dragon? <clears throat> yeah, the that, lung dragon. So like real long and... A long, slender, serpentine body with four short lizard-like legs, mm -hmm. a long-snouted head with two like goat-like horns sweeping back, and though capable of flight, this golden dragon was wingless. Now, oh. in third edition, they scrapped this design for a somewhat more traditional D&D dragon body right. type. No, all dragons have wings. Right. I but, love the wingless one, though. That's so fucking cool. Oh, yeah, cool. it's really cool, and it looks great. But uh, with third edition, they created a gold dragon that carried over a few of these characteristics derived from the original Eastern Asian influence, but kind of merged it with a more D&D look. And I this look has also grown on me, so I like them both. Okay. So gold dragons in the current meta, not meta, Current canon. Edition? Yeah, current edition, sure. Gold dragons are quite majestic looking. Atop their heads are two sets of twin golden horns that look almost crown-like. It's like four horns? Four horns, Total? yeah, exactly. Double and bunny they, ears? It almost looks like a crown. Side. So, like, we have one set that sweeps up and back, and the other curves out into the sides. Ooh, okay, yeah. cool. Uh, around their mouths are these long, tentacle-like, muscular spines that almost look like a catfish whiskers, Yeah, if you will. okay. Oh, shit. Um, this gives the gold dragons a very wise and sagacious appearance. So, like, you know, yeah, like a like a wise old wizard. Oh, it looks like a beard almost. Yeah, like yeah. like uh, I've seen a catfish depicted as a wizard or something like that. It's yeah, got sure. The, it's got the things coming off its face mm -hmm. or like a cat. Right. I, I guess. What am I even fucking thinking of? But um, I've seen it. 
I don't want to talk. You're thinking of a catfish. A catfish, but yeah. a, dressed as a wizard? That's that's weird. <laughs> that's very specific. Um, I'm sure it exists. It's something. <laughs> that's hilarious. definitely something. So gold dragons have long necks. I hope we get fan art of catfish wizard. <laughs> <laughs> gold dragons have long necks and especially long tails. Uh, this, along with the slightly shorter legs, gives the gold dragon a pseudo East Asian dragon look. Mm-hmm. So not quite, but it like alludes to it. Sure. Along its neck are a set of twin frills that are uh, above either shoulder and coming all the way up to its horns. Okay. Um, they have broad sail-like wings that start at the shoulder and extend all the way down their extremely long tails. Unlike other dragons that flap their wings to fly, gold dragon's wings move in this graceful, like, rippling motion, almost like a wave. Ooh, that's yeah. fucking cool. It looks really cool, yeah. <laughs> and I've actually, on uh, the D&D subreddit, someone did, like, a... a a gif of a gold dragon in flight with the ripples. It oh, looked that's really so cool. cool. Yeah. We gotta find that. Yeah. So, uh, where that's, was that? that's super. So that's the only dragon flying like that. Yeah, exactly. And if you think about it, like those motions shouldn't be able to carry that much weight. So it has to be via magic. And also, again, it alludes back to its East Asian original influence. These ripples are just producing, producing like magic force. Yeah. Just moving me in the direction I want to go. I will say the uh, gold dragon is the most magical of all dragons, which we'll get into a little bit later. How, I wonder if the, the ripples moving so fast, you know how like it's hard to tell when something's moving. Oh, right. So like, it's like an optical illusion. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's looking like this flowing, like rhythmic thing and it's really sure. going like a thousand times the speed. That's, I like that idea. That's kind of cool. He's like, no, don't get near my wings. Oh God, I'm so sorry. Uh, that's like one of its attacks. <laughs> just like fucking shake you to death. Or, like flap so, you uh, a bunch of times. <laughs> Their scales shine a bright golden. Um, they are larger than other metallic dragons, and they smell strongly of saffron and incense. That doesn't and make any sense. It makes a lot of sense if you think about it in terms of mythology or ancient history, I should say. Ooh, hit me so with that ancient history, Will. Both saffron, saffron and frankincense were two of like the major luxuries of the ancient world. Like these oh, yeah, things totally. were only kings and lords were able to have access to these things. Saffron is a spice that you put in food. It's very expensive to this day. And most saffron that you could buy, like let's say here in America, will be fake because the real shit is extremely rare and extremely expensive. Oh my. Incense are much less expensive today, obviously, but back in the ancient world, it was considered a great luxury. Like so the coffee. Kind of like coffee, but way more so than that. Um, Way more than coffee. I mean, if we go back to the story of the three kings, if we're talking like biblical, uh-huh. like frankincense was one of the fucking gifts given by one of the three wise men. Yeah, up like, there with gold all, or Up there with gold. Yeah. So, yes, the fact that a gold dragon smells like saffron and incense, I think that's an amazingly nice touch. That's pretty cool. Okay, so it's it's <clears throat> this is like a very, because this is like a and d fantasy world, mm-hmm. but this is like a hearkening to like the lore of the real world almost. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So there's yeah. like a parallel there. Mm-hmm, is, mm-hmm. there is there something in D- D&D lore maybe that we should know about that makes this kind of add up with it? Or like no, at, at I would say that even in, in, D&D uh, in, a me- in a medieval D&D world, both Saffron and Incense are probably still very opulently luxurious. Okay, cool. It's <clears throat> good enough for me. So gold dragons are wise and exceptionally patient individuals. Uh, they are also strong believers in the rule of order and of the greater good. They are rather zealous about these beliefs, and though they do have a deep philosophical and ethical understanding of these concepts, unlike silvers, who are also quite philosophical, golds are not overly contemplative. Golds know they're right. There's no need for discussion. Uh, they have a tendency to see things in black and white. Because of this, gold dragons have a bit of a a reputation for being arrogant and dismissive of the lesser, lesser in quotes, beings, uh, even if they do have an enormous amount of patience and in, in dealing and learning with them, they're still quite dismissive. Okay. Um, it's kind of back to, uh, I've said this a few times on the episode, uh, the, they know they're better than you, but they know it's not your fault, so they don't hold it against you. Right. That's how golds treat everyone, including other dragons that aren't golds. Okay. So, again, they think they're the pinnacle of... All dragon kind and all that jazz. They pretty much is true though, right? Yeah, that's the other thing is like, and they're kind of right, which makes it more frustrating to deal with. They're not entirely right though. Yeah, and I can right. see that being frustrated. This isn't this isn't very common occurrence to run across a gold dragon. No, not at all. So they're like, extraordinarily rare. It might be pretty obvious if you're like power scaled enough to get into that sort of encounter, like right. who and what a gold dragon would be an act would act like in front of you. Right. There might there might be some like essential tip-offs immediately that tells you like oh i'm dealing with somebody uber powerful yeah i think there could be tip-offs in that regard i think the thing is a lot of gold dragons 
when they're in disguise, they like to take like they like to take like the forms of like old wizened men and whatnot. And they're very kindly. So you don't really get that arrogant side. Yeah. Unless like I suppose if you spend enough time around them, you would get that. But in your brief encounter, your brief likely encounter, you would think it was just some kindly wise old man. Who needed like to sit at your campfire for the night. Exactly. And then the wind changed and you smelled saffron. Exactly. That's, yeah. Like, wow. Like it that. just smelled a lot like campfire. But then again, if you're <laughs> some like adventurer or peasant, you probably don't know what the fuck <laughs> saffron smells like. Because guess what? You've never smelt it because it's extraordinarily rare and expensive. Well, I'm going to stop you there because okay. a lot of a lot of adventurers are ex-nobles. There's the noble they background and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. So maybe you have. It I smells like father's soup. You smell like father. <laughs> I haven't smelled father since I was a boy. Mm. This conversation is getting weird. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go now. <laughs> I changed my mind. I'll be plenty warm elsewhere. I don't need to be by this fire. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, because of this mentality of like dismissiveness. Uh, and th- no, this mentality of of superiority, I should right. say. Yes. Bull dragons avoid philosophical or ethical arguments with others, not of their kind. Although arguments that preach the benefits of chaos over law kind of set gold dragons on edge. Uh, few dragons can resist trumping the argument with a counter advocating for law over chaos. I don't know why that is the specific thing that sets them off, but there it is. Okay. So, um, oh yeah, but when a gold dragon encounters someone actively advocating evil they stay silent but mentally mark that speaker as a person of interest okay which could mean a lot of things so we're talking about like yeah. a soapbox preacher hitting, yeah hitting you with that cult shit right hitting and you the, with the cult the, shit the, or the even dra- just just hate speech like fuck the people from kirkwall they're all sons of bitches we should go rage war well don't say that about the people of kirkwall like, i know i shouldn't i'm um, sorry <laughs> but that's in the gold dragon's like all right I'm Johnny, wa- I see I'm wa- you. I'm I see watching you, Johnny. You. I'm watching you. I'm watching you, soapbox, Johnny. <laughs> soapbox, Johnny. <laughs> exactly. So okay. yeah, that that's the thing that could happen. Yeah, because it's a bad look, right? Somebody's oh, up, that's a real somebody's bad up look. there trying to resonate with the crowd, and you tackle the guy. Oh like, yeah, you that's look like true. the asshole. <laughs> It's true. So gold dragons know. They know gold not to look know. like the no, asshole. No, I'll get I'll get so much Johnny in his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> would a gold dragon do something like maybe a brass or copper would I could see doing, which is to like use magic to make this person look stupid or play a prank on them? That's definitely not a gold dragon's mo. That okay, is a copper, a steel, uh, a bra- even a silver would do that, but not a gold. So maybe golds like, again, black and white, evil exterminate, <laughs> evil exterminate. Okay, so so like. They wouldn't be like, I need to get that guy to stop talking, but I need to know, I need to not be yeah. involved. And they would just like shut his voice be, off with magic or something. No, I think a gold dragon would be, would not do anything and would see what's the damage here. Like what's the crowd's reaction to Soapbox Johnny? Um, does Soapbox Johnny even know what he's talking about? How well um, did Soapbox Johnny roll? Exactly. His that, and, and like if, is Soapbox Johnny about to like raise a village. Right. Like, yeah. Then, then we can step in. Right. Exactly. And so is it like, it's, more, I hope we get fan art of soapbox Johnny. <laughs> soapbox Johnny. And, and then you have to become soapbox gold dragon to fight him. Yeah, sure. I guess, well, no, again, evil well, exterminate. You, I mean, you go like, kill that guy, but he's then gonna like, kill soapbox Johnny in his sleep. I thought I made that clear. Well, you kill him in his sleep. But like, if he raised the town, he raised the town. And if, you Oh f- yeah, no, if shit was getting out of hand, then like, let's say, uh, they decide they're marching our Kirkwall now. Right. And then the, the whole village is going. Gold Dragon. Gold Dragon's like, oh polymorph. shit. Turns into Gold Dragon, swoops down in front of village. Eats that guy. Eats, eats Soapbox eats Johnny. Soapbox Johnny. Directly off his soapbox. <laughs> exactly. Which they were carrying him on because apparently he's taken over the village. <laughs> and Carry me to Kirkwall. And then he threatens the village that if they ever try something like this again, he's going to eat them all. <laughs> they run back home. And no one dies with Sobox Johnny. And with a word, the gold dragon swayed the town back to peace. <laughs> exactly. Uh, is it more like, uh, hey, guys, uh, go home or I'll eat you? No. I th- Well, yeah, it'd be something like that. But I imagine <laughs> it would be like more grand. With, with a, a word. grand kind of speech. Yeah. With a word, the gold dragon swayed the town back yeah. to peace. and they Returned back to your home. They went back to or, farming apples. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, totally. So when it comes to promoting good. Actions speak louder than words in the eyes of Gold Dragon. Most spend the bulk of their long lives seeking out and destroying evil. Uh, this self, these self-appointed quests are pursued with zeal and relentless fervor, with the only acceptable outcome being complete victory over whatever evil they face. Um, whether that means utter annihilation of the enemy or bringing the villains to justice, it just kind of depends on the circumstance. Okay. 
which is kind of what we were just talking about. So, so in, a, in a lot of cases, we have D&D evil neutralizing itself with like yeah. self-deprecating paranoia and or other right. enemies neutralizing each other. Right. Evil fighting evil. But for the unchecked and, and boundless abundance of evil that exists elsewhere, we have mm-hmm. gold dragons. Indeed. Exactly. Okay. This is an example of good also having some major players in, in their corner of the ring yeah so in your world mm. you could just be like well things are happening but like it seems like somebody's stepping up to take care of it or like a bunch of gold dragons are busy here <laughs> so this evil l- got left unchecked and now we have this adventuring party right exactly or, yeah, okay got exactly it. so interestingly enough the method with which a uh, gold dragons usually pursue their crusades ru- run roughly along the lines of like a sting operation if you will okay so like they venture out into the world disguised disguised as like a nondescript humanoid or a harmless animal listening for news or rumors of dangerous or evil creatures slash persons in the world once they have chosen their mark they will then uh, begin investigating the validity validity of the rumor okay from there the gold dragon will either stealthily steal into the territory of said evil or infiltrate within the the evil's ranks if it's like a cult type situation once the gold dragon has done this, it will finally reveal its true form and mete out punishment and justice. <laughs> As you can see, a gold dragon like volunteering to be the sacrifice in like yes, a, exactly. He's like, yes. I'll do it, and they've I'll got him it. at the center of, center of the, this altar. They're yeah. all like standing around, yeah, and just exactly. chanting, and he's yes. like, "Spin attack!" He like, kills them Surprise, all. Surprise, bitches! <laughs> yes, exactly. Sick. <clears throat> With that being said, let's take a short rest. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the part of the episode where we're not talking about the last thing. Talking about our love. You tell them first. I love you. Um, If you can hear the sound of my voice, I love you. And if you're listening to this, hopefully you can. You're not you're not listening to this on mute, are you? It's not just playing, is it? That would be strange. That'd be fine. It's fine with me. (laughs) You're your own person. Beautiful, wonderful person who listens to the show or you don't listen to the show, but you're playing it. And that's important, too. Although, like, what's the point of all this? Can I just put out a blank audio recording? I don't think I can get away with <laughs> They'd that. They'd never know. They would never know. They've been listening on on mute. They just want to watch our face on YouTube, which means this part of the episode is being skipped. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let us talk about our Patreon. It's gone a little on a little bit of an overhaul. Um, there's lots more stuff there randomly than there used to be. Yeah. And I feel like there was kind of a lot of stuff there already. But now there's way more. Like you can get F bats at the five dollar and ten dollar tier. You're getting last season's F bats in the five dollar as I so if I finish one in the ten dollar tier, you're getting one in the five dollar tier also. Yeah. So I'm releasing those at the same time pretty much. And uh so by the time this is out, there should be two or three F bats for you guys in those tiers to go listen mm-hmm. to. Um <clears throat> there's also the uh the elusive twenty dollar tier with its <laughs> with its new merchy perk. Indeed. You want to tell them about our merchy perk, Will? Yeah, so we announced that for this year on Patreon for our twenty dollar tier, we're giving away a What the Grumpsh mug with a really, really sweet custom piece of artwork. And yeah, it looks great. It's got a we got it has Grumpsh's face and it says What's a Grumpsh right below. It looks great. Yeah, we're gonna keep all our pencils and highlighters and stuff in it. And I'm looking at it right now. Here's <laughs> the sound of the pencils inside of it. Damn, Indeed. that sounds like good merch. <laughs> Shit. Come get it. Indeed. Um you can get it all year long. Um, everybody that was a rollover patron <clears throat> of a certain amount of time also got a new mug. That's how the tier works. So we're also releasing a series of like behind the scenes Dungeon Cast called Dungeon Cast X. Is that yeah, episode yeah. episode X, which episode is like X, yeah. I name I name the file I make all of our Dungeon Cast episodes from episode X, so I don't have to like make a new one each time. Um, so yeah, we have X one through three on there now. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Well, two right now, but we're doing our third one. Right after, right this, after recording. this recording, which is that they, they're they kind of like monthly themes, if possible. So like we did a Halloween one and um, the first one was like a general. It's our first one, like behind the scenes. Yeah. Where we like semi complain about some stuff. And then uh, this one's going to be a Thanksgiving one. And then I'm sure we'll do a Christmas one and then we'll have like our take on the new year. And then there will be like a Valentine's Day one. There's something to celebrate all the time. Maybe we'll do that one for National Donut Day and Will could tell us what his favorite uh, nut covered donut is. I don't like donuts. There it is. <laughs> This is episode X, Donut Edition. (laughs) Will doesn't like donuts. We're not doing it. (laughs) We do want an ice cream. Can we go back to the show? We can. Bye. All right, Brian. 
we've returned. We have. Um, I got a lot more to say about Golden Dragon, so let's do it. Very pretty looking. That they are, quite majestic. So unlike most species of dragons, gold dragons have a very strict and structured hierarchical society that includes and encompasses all members of the species. It's like div divine military, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a way, kind of. There's, there, Yes. This is like just slightly removed from angels, really. Like, yeah, very much so. There's, what's the equivalent of like dragon gods, angels? Yeah. And it's like, the gold dragon, right? <clears throat> gold dragons and angels get along great. Sick. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> this hierarchy is also always topped by a single leader. This leader is elected by the entire species from the ranks of the great golden worms. So essentially the ancient gold dragons um, <laughs> that are left alive in the world. They uh, are worm like, huh? Because they've got like their legs are a little stumpier, et cetera. They're, yeah. And like worm is just another word for dragon for some reason that I'm not entirely sure about. But. Well, isn't a worm in D&D &D like a legless like kind of more of a serpentine dragon. No, no, any separate? dragons considered a worm. Oh, okay. Usually the word worm is uh, reserved for the most ancient of dragons. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. What's the one with the two legs in the back? A wyvern. That's a wyvern. Okay, that's where I'm. So the wyvern is not necessarily right. a dragon. Okay. So Sorry. this leader that's elected is always addressed by the honorific of your resplendence Ooh. and serves for life. Um, though every gold dragon submits a vote toward their preferred candidate, the outcome of the election is usually already known. Near 100% of the time, the community votes for the candidate with the most acclaim and achievements in life. In the rare occasion where two or more candidates uh, are of equal merit, the community may vote for the candidates to share the office as either co-rulers or alternating rulers. Whoa, that's, <clears throat> that's a cool... Concept. I would love to see like a lineage kind of or like a historical like timeline on that where That'd like pretty cool. from this time to this era, <clears throat> these two dragons split the rule. Right. And then right. they fought to the death and then the uh, the next best guy stepped up. Or well, whatever. They're, they're not going to fight to the death because they're gold dragons. Well, maybe they fought they something else to the death. Oh, I see. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And I wasn't saying what I just said initially. So you had it right. <laughs> okay, Don't worry. Cool. cool. <laughs> All right. So the duties of the ruler of gold dragons. Uh, often proved to be quite light. Um, gold dragons, being the inherently lawful good beings they, that they are, often know how they are expected to behave and ac act accordingly. So thus, the ruler's authority rarely needs to be exercised. Um, so the ruler position ends up being more of an advisory role for other dragons to beseech. For yeah, in, for insight to, to help advice. with like situational debacles. Yeah, like they're like, all self managers, but it's like I've never <clears throat> seen this before. Your resplendence, please assist. Yeah, kind of like that, or like if if a gold dragon is stuck in like a ethical quandary, like uh, both decisions seem unethical, but no decision also seems unethical, and so like they might beseech the ruler for some sort of like philosophical insight. Okay, sweet. Um, yeah, so the ruler will also serve as a chief representative of the species when dealing with other races. Um, if something of like huge importance, I guess, is going on that requires a, a, a chief representative of the gold dragons. Um, yeah, so but in rare cases uh, of a gold dragon's misconduct, the ruler will serve as the chief enforcer and judge in all matters. I see. Okay. So, so if there's a dispute of some kind, like, right. hey, that guy did something <clears throat> not lawful good. Exactly. If something really comes down to it, the ruler will take care of it. Sweet. Yeah. Courtship between gold dragons is a very deliberate and dignified affair. The two prospective mates will spend years debating philosophy and ethics and venturing out on quests together to gain the full measure of one another. Uh, once the pair agree to mate, permission will be asked of the ruler, who rarely ever withholds his or her blessing. Yeah, because you fucking dived so far into their eHarmony account that you, like, know everything about exactly. them. Exactly. So there it is. Uh, gold dragons tend to keep to themselves, though. Uh, they see themselves as the pinnacle of dragon kind and aren't very interested in the company of others. Not that they spurn the company of others, either. It's just they don't pursue it. Um, <clears throat> as for chromatic dragons, gold dragons hold them all in contempt. Red dragons and gold dragons specifically have an especially strong rivalry, though. Uh, reds resent golds for rivaling them in power, and golds see reds for the mighty purveyors of evil that they are, and see their demise as their duty and responsibility. Yeah, like if if I'm gonna go like toe to toe with like a like a really big bad evil, it's probably mm -hmm. the red dragon. Like that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, and I think a gold would see it as their duty to uh, attack a red dragon because like who else is gonna? You know what I mean? The whole with great power comes great responsibility. And like golds are one of the few that can go toe to toe. So they're 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 approaching the situation from an honorable standpoint, which is to like I need to go into the fray myself. Right. I'm not going to try to spring a trap or like manipulate somebody. I mean, into they might, but I think yeah, a lot of times gold dragons are just like no, like. 
There's no need for the trap. I'm a fucking gold dragon. Like, what's anyone going to do to me? Like, well, like a red dragon who's ready might. Mm, yeah, that's true. Like, a gold dragon isn't going to plunge into the lair, if, no, especially knowing that the red right? knows that it's coming. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, I see. But a gold so. dragon might stand outside and be like, yo. I know that you know. Yeah. That I know. That you know. Leave this territory now. <laughs> you know, I, the golden dragon of whatever, like, leave this territory now or, like, you know, face the consequences, and a red being as arrogant and prideful as it is, isn't going to let that go. It's going to come outside. They're going to fight. <laughs> it's like, going to be like, no. Yeah, yeah it's, but it's not going to stay inside because red dragons have a massive amount of pride. And so, like, it's going to come outside. They're going to fight, and, like, one of them is going to win. Okay. A red might flee for its life if it's about to die, but other than that, its pride won't allow it to not fight. Wouldn't it be fun if they agreed to, like, polymorph into humans to, to fight like that? And they just had like a fist fight outside. <laughs> I mean, that'd be kind of funny. Yeah. That'd be extreme, right? Yeah. But like they wouldn't do that because, again, like they love being dragons. It's not like remember how in the Silver Dragons episode we talked about how like silvers are the only dragons that will admit that there are some things that being a dragon is a little uh, inconvenient for. Sure. Yeah. But all other dragons like, no, this is the perfect form. I get that. Why would I be anything else if I didn't have to be? Man, I would love to see <laughs> like disputes be- between dragons being settled with fistfights as polymorphed humans. That would be like just pretty funny. Yeah, it would be pretty funny. Sorry. So, no, it's fine. <laughs> so gold, uh, like, oh, I almost repeated a whole paragraph that I just read. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Unlike almost every other dragon, uh, golds don't have a specific terrain or environment of their preference. As powerful as they are, golds can live wherever they choose, and extreme climate of any kind doesn't really bother them, except for the cold a little bit, but not really. Okay. Um, there are only two factors that all golden dragon territories have in common. Number one, they must be secluded, and number two, they must be pic- picturesque. Environments with crystal clear lakes and rivers, rolling green hills and majestic mountains, mist covered islands and deep gorges are all choice locations for a gold dragon. Is it beautiful? Is it private? That's all they care about. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. And I would probably pick my houses if I had a choice with the same measure. Right. Exactly. If if money was no object, that's exactly how I would choose my house too. Money is no object for a gold. You're made of gold. You're made of gold. You're made of it. <laughs> it's true. Oh, are we going to get into hordes? Yeah, we will. Okay. All right. We'll do it right now. Okay, let's get into hordes. Actually, we'll do it in, later. in a second. <laughs> First, let's talk about their layer. So, okay. gold spend much more time on the contents of its layer versus its location. So, a gold dragon's layer is always carved from stone. It always has a maze work of chambers and that are all beautifully decorated. And much like a castle or a manor built underground, the layer will include a main hall, a banquet hall, a resting chamber, a study, a kitchen, a lobby, a storage room, etc. Man, so little little mansions under under the ground. I like uh, I like D and D cribs. Basically, it's you it's just D&D telling cribs, me what the yes. what the layer looks like. Exactly. <laughs> so a gold's layer is also often it also often houses many loyal creatures of good that guard the layer and live here. Okay. So it's not all the way alone. <laughs> so you might have like an angel in your coffee room. Like in your uh, maybe not room. an angel, just because angels like they live in the outer planes. Oh, oh maybe not a guardian, but like a visitor. Like, sure, yeah, I can see, like, Ben the Solar Angel comes over sometimes. Ben the Solar Angel likes cool. to watch football with me. Yeah, sure. Uh, American football. I, we're, no, we're fuck both it. Really Regular big football. Manchester fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're just betting on, on, on Manchester. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> um, anyway, speaking of which, let's actually talk about their hordes. Um, golds value magic items above all other things. I mean, not all other things, all other objects. Of okay, value. yeah. Yeah, it's not like over people's lives or anything like that. They value magic items in their hordes the most. Um, their hordes tend to be riddled with them, along with uh, objects or pieces of art that are well-crafted or show impressive artisanship, um, paintings, script, uh, sculptures, porcelain, calligraphy, things like that. Sure. So not as much like gem and gold as you would think, it's more like more like the Getty, like really their houses, cool shit. Their house is a museum, yeah, full it's of like, like yeah, really cool shit, really cool, yeah. really cool museum. Yeah. Now, when it comes to their food, gold dragons do not prefer either meat or plant based diets. Instead, their food of choice are pearls and gems. Mm. Though they don't need to gorge themselves on such wealth necessarily to be sated, it's just what tastes best tastes best to them. Is it like uh like eating a gem for a gold dragon is like that bread in Lord of the Rings? They eat it and they're full all day, like a little tiny bite. I could see that. I kind of like that. They're just like, mm, emeralds. I like the I'm idea for the next 48 I like the hours. Idea of the more like the more valuable something is, the more it fills them up. 
So it's like they eat something like super, super precious. It's like, oh, I won't need to eat for a year. Oh, wow. Yeah, be, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that'd like, be kind of cool. They're, stra- they're stranded somewhere and they're like going to die. So they have to eat like their precious ring. Right. They like nibble a little diamond <laughs> off their ring. Like, exactly. Mm, delicious. <laughs> now I'm good for a year. I can now fight. So any questions before we get into the regional effects, layer actions, and then stat block? Uh, did we, uh, we, we did talk about the horde. So obviously there's like, besides all, they've got a big stack of gold, right? Uh, oh, I mean, they got... A very, very big hoard that's worth a lot of money, but maybe not necessarily an actual pile of gold. Wow. Because, like, when you think about, like, uh, a chromatic, it's it always seems like it's a big pile of shit, you know? Yeah, yeah, And, and like, uh, I, I've seen the, the metallic dragons are more on the lines of, like, this, my house is a museum. And right. It's like orderly. They're more like rich people are in real life where it's yeah. like, yeah, look at like all this expensive dope ass shit I have. And so I have a vault. Yeah. I have a safe with right. coin in it. Yeah. And like it's my it's not very it's probably not the biggest thing. In yeah. The biggest room in the house, but it's it's very sizable, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Well, there are gold cups dra- lining the walls. The, yeah. That, that well, chromatic thing. dragons have a mental illness where they have to sleep on their fucking horde. Right. It's exactly. Like, yeah. Anyways. Any other questions? <laughs> Fuck chromatics. <laughs> no, no, let's get into the next stuff. Okay, so let's talk about regional effects. So, the region containing a legendary gold dragon's lair is warped by the dragon's magic, which creates one or more of the following effects. We got three here. So, whenever a creature that can understand a language sleeps or enters a state of trance of or reverie within six miles of the dragon's lair, the dragon can establish telepathic contact with that creature and converse within its dreams. Whoa. Uh, the creature remembers its conversation with the dragon upon waking. Remember I was telling you about how gold dragons are kind of like the most powerful or most magical of all dragons? Mm-hmm. I forgot to mention that while a gold dragon is in its lair... Um, I don't know if this is actually part of the layer actions or regional effects I'm about to read you. I'm just talking about like canonically mm-hmm, throughout the lore. Mm-hmm. Um, they are able to dream prophetic dreams and glimpse into the future. Oh, but sick. Only like, uh, what's the word? Um, not very far into the future. Only like really close up like in the coming days kind of deal. Okay. And you got to remember that Bahamut is uh, a god of prophecy. Yes. I think that's why gold dragons have this ability. Okay, cool. All right, so the next one. Can you imagine being like asleep at like, like you're on this mountain or what a precarious mountain? There's yeah. probably a gold dragon up at the top with yeah. a sick view, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he's just like you have this dream and you wake up and you're like, somebody told me to get off their lawn. <laughs> That's hilarious. Like, should we yeah. go? Yeah, I think we should go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so second effect: banks of beautiful opalescent mist manifest within six miles of the dragon's lair. The mist does not obscure anything. It assumes haunting forms when evil creatures are near the dragon or other non-evil creatures in the mist, uh, warning such creatures of danger. So it's like warning mist. So if you're a not bad person, but something bad is like coming close to you in that territory, you're going to start seeing haunting images. So like you. if you and your party all have the same dream to get off this dude's lawn yeah. and you yeah. don't, mm-hmm. the mist is going to come and be like, get off my lawn! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happened. Okay. Um, finally, uh, gems and pearls within one mile of the dragon's lair sparkle, sparkle and gleam, shedding a dim light in a five foot radius. Oh, that's cool. So, so it all knows your where to go find food. Glow in the dark. Yeah, yeah, it does know where to find food. That's true. <laughs> um, layer actions. Let's go, let's go over those. So, uh, as with all other dragons, all layer actions uh, occur on initiative count of twenty, and we got two actions a gold dragon can take. First, the dragon glimpses the future. Oh, here we go with the future. The dragon glimpses <laughs> the future, so it has advantage on attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws until initiative count 20 on the next round. Holy Ooh. smokes. So it just always has advantage. That is so it just oh, cool. always has advantage. That That's is fucking the, cool. That is the coolest ability out of all out the of ones we've talked I'm about. I'm glad I saved them for last. Besides the thick bushes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can't forget the thickets. Um, <laughs> where was I? Oh, yeah. The final the final feature. Uh, hold on. Which dragon was the thickets? It was, it was the, the black green dragon. dragon. No, it was a green dragon. Oh, the, the bog dragon. <laughs> Anyways, one creature. <laughs> no, the, wait. The white dragon had thick ice. It's there was, true. There were two it kinds. Of, well, it's uh, thicket specifically. Yeah. It's it, just thick walls of ice. And, yeah. Okay. Indeed. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Final final action. One creature the dragon can see within 120 feet of it must succeed on DC 15 charisma saving throw or be banished to the dream plane. <laughs> what? <laughs> Damn. Fuck. A uh, different plane of existence the dragon has imagined into being. 
I okay. told you they were the most magical. Okay. To, okay, though. To, to escape, the creature must use his action to make charisma check contested by the dragons, which I'm just going to take a quick sneak peek. Oh, as a 28 charisma. Good luck with that. Smile at um, each other. See who does better. <laughs> if the Well, remember, charisma is like force of will. Um, if the creature wins, it escapes the dream plane. Otherwise, the effect ends on initiative count 20 in the next round. When the effect ends, the creature reappears in the space it left or the nearest unoccupied space that it that that one is occupied. So they can either constantly see in the future or banish you to their private dream realm. It's fucking amazing. That and their dream plane can be anything, right? Well, no, because yeah. like, well, yeah, when, yeah, can their dream plane be like a fucking just a field of lava? Like, yeah, can, but you remember, you're in the die? dream plane, so you're not actually being hurt. So but, it's Genjutsu. It's you're Genjutsu. Just, yeah, this getting, is Genjutsu. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah, this is exactly what this is. It puts you in there. Gengu- yeah. <laughs> Gengu- Genjutsu. Genjutsu. And you're fucking getting attacked. A crow uh, is eating your liver every day. Right, for right. Like I mean, that's years. some psychological horror you're inflicting upon your enemy. I mean, that you could. Maybe you're you're in there and it's fucking dope and you don't want to leave. Maybe yeah, it's like that's true. That. I mean, they are They're very, very good, good right? beings. They're so maybe like, you no, just, you can go to my cloud land you and stop bugging me. You just went to fucking Candyland and got high on sugar. And then maybe you're its friend now because, like, oh, you sent me to a wonderful place. Like, I don't want to attack. You. Dude, thanks. Can you, <laughs> can you get in me again? That was fucking dope. <laughs> it's interesting. All right, let's go over the stat block for the Ancient Gold Dragon. Okay. Armor class 22, challenge rating 24, which is equivalent to the Red Dragon. 546 HP. It's got a walking speed of 40 feet, a flying speed of 80 feet, and a swimming speed of 40 feet. Oh, yeah, that's something I forgot to mention. Gold Dragons are naturally aquatic. They like to live underwater. They can breathe underwater. So they have an indoor pool. Yeah, uh, always. Duh. Always. And it's made of fucking gold. Immune to fire damage. Now, that's that's going to gotta make a gold dragon slash red dragon fight interesting since they're both immune to each other's breaths. So it's it's really like... It's really a muscle fight. physically stronger and, and has better spells. Yeah, or you could just polymorph in rock, paper, scissors and just like call it a wash. Uh, yeah, you know? I suppose you could do that too. Uh, dark vision, uh, blind sight, all that jazz. Amphibious, like I said, they can breathe air or water. They got the legendary resistance. That's three times a day. They can uh, succeed on a saving throw, which they have advantage of over constantly in their lair because they're freaking. I mean, prophetic. if they're doing the premonition, doing right? The they have yeah, to. It's true. Does it cost them any? Re- it doesn't cost no, them resources. No, they could to just do, that do it all. every fucking turn. Yeah, why, why aren't you doing um, that until you want to genjutsu someone instead? Right. In, indeed. Okay. Uh, they got the multi attack on the bite claw and tail. You know, bite does two d ten plus ten. Claw does two d six plus ten. Tail does two d eight plus ten. And they can do one of each every turn. Um, they have the Frightful Presence, which is a DC 24 wisdom saving throw, or you're now you're frightened. Uh, breath weapons. They got two, because remember, all metallic dragons have two. First is their fire breath. We're looking at a DC 24 dexterity saving throw, uh, and 13 D 10 fire damage on a failed save. Mm. So, that averages out to be 70 damage per hit. Mm, um, wonderful. Other uh, breath attack is called weakening breath. The dragon exhales gas in a 90 foot cone. Each creature in that area must make a DC 24 strength saving throw or have disadvantage on strength based attack rolls, strength checks, and strength saving throws for one minute. Jeez. So it can just sap you of your bodily strength. I mean, pretty much. Are there combats that have lasted more than two rounds? I've never been a part of a combat that lasted more than two minutes. Um, that's not true because in our battle royale, that uh, oh my god, went, except for that yeah, one, yeah, it almost went twenty rounds. That yeah. was nuts. Um, but yeah, no, one minute is a serious long time, as we found out during the battle royale. Yes. Um, then they have the change shape ability. Remember, all metallics can naturally poly- polymorph. And then it's got the same legendary actions that all other dragons get. It's got detect, it's got tail attack, it's got wing attack. Any questions about the golden dragon, I mean, Brian? Uh, let's, where Where are golden dragons in your world? Where, where do you, how are you implementing a gold dragon? Oh, you mean like in, if in tra- not in, traditional. in Super Quest Saga? No, um, I don't want to know about spoilers for yeah, Super like, Quest Saga. Well, yeah, that's a big but ask. we did just talk to like, okay, no spoilers for yeah, Super yeah, Quest Saga. Yeah, no spoilers. Yeah, please. Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> uh, how in, in your vanilla game... Uh-huh. What what are you doing with these bad boys? How are you um, where where are you going to if one shows up? Right. How where why? I don't usually use gold dragons. I'm I tend to use silver dragons a lot. Um I mean obviously if, if you're I talking were, about like the common, you know, progression, you're going to meet a silver before you meet a gold. I would do right? No, I wouldn't do it like that. Like cuz they're close enough in power that it doesn't really matter. But if I were to use a gold dragon, I'd probably do like a a Bahamut type thing. Where um, it's 
like a gold dragon disguised as an old man, maybe like helping the party out. Yeah, and giving they, them a word of wisdom. Yeah, and then maybe in like a situation that gets a little too hot for the party, he reveals his true form, saves him, and then leaves forever. He just like vibrates his wing in the presence of their enemy and right. kills them. Yeah, exactly. Just like that. Okay. <clears throat> I but, mean that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, there's. Th- that's I can also see like a really practical use. Yeah, of this. maybe a gold dragon. Maybe there's like a known gold dragon that the party seeks for advice. But in order to get advice, they must prove their worth and their valor, like as a good person, worth helping, so that the gold dragon sends them on some sort of side quest. They go do that, then they can return and get the answer they wanted. Yeah, go get me the sword of Galthias. Yeah, it's or you know, there's you know, I've heard rumors of this evil going on on this mountain. Go kill the Go poison tree. Go investigate it. Yeah. Tell me what happens. I'll know if you're lying because I'm a fucking gold dragon. You guys are pretty powerful. <clears throat> go go purge the hags. Yeah, you guys forest. are pretty powerful. Y'all should be using that for good. Yeah. So go do that and then I'll give you the thing you want. More power. Right. Okay. I like that a lot as like a, um, like maybe the party is looking for stuff to do. Like yeah. maybe they're in between something. Sure. I, there's gotta be, because I, I don't know why I'm just having this thought now, but mm-hmm. like, there's got to be people that are like, I want to play as Gold Dragon, please. I mean, that's how Dragonborn came into existence. People wanted to play as dragons, and it's like, well, that's broken, so here's a dragon person. Yeah, so, like, this obviously destroys the, like, when the party, when you have four Gold Dragons, mm-hmm. what are they doing? Mm-hmm, that seems mm-hmm. fun. They could fight all kinds of bullshit. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but then you have to be Gold Dragon. Yeah, but then you have to be Gold Dragon. It's not like that. That campaign. You don't have a character sheet. You you just have the monster. You have block. a stat block, yeah. and that I think that's cool because you can sure. do you can do a ton of stuff with this stat block, and yeah. and you do have the basis of what a Gold Dragon's supposed to be to role Absol- play with. Absolutely. But like, is your boss? That would be fun. Is your boss Bahamut? And are you going to like? That that seems like a fun like one shot. Yeah, right? like, I, I can definitely see that. Here's yeah. your gold dragon stat block. You have this special ability as mm-hmm. the gold dragon Icarus from blah 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 or whatever and your you're name just is going to muck about being gold dragon. Muck party. about. Let's That's go. Pretty cool. Let's play. Like let's play a Charlie's Angel style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. I, I don't know how I'm. I, I love the idea of like I we're going to send a team of gold dragons to go obliterate this blah 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 this incursion or whatever. Right. And that would be a fun thing to have going on in the background while you're tackling the footman or the lich or whatever. Yeah, sure. That squeaking by the gold dragons well, fighting think, and the main shit. Yeah, and that's that tackles one of the issues about introducing a gold dragon, which I think a lot of time gold dragons, even silver dragons or good dragons in general, don't get introduced to a campaign storyline because you introduce the problem of this really powerful good being exists. Why doesn't this just take care of the party's problem? Well, there's got to be... You got to come up with the reason why. There's got to be yeah, something you else. You got to work it in, yeah. I'm sure a Mount Celestia climb would include a lot of gold dragons, Oh, right? without a doubt. Yeah, they love that place. Yeah, yeah. they would have to. They're, that's pretty much... Bahamut's either there yeah, or... Yeah, Bahamut's the there. Yeah, they're all over the place. So there, if you're doing yeah. elements of plane stuff or if you're doing Mount Celestia stuff, you're almost going to certainly have gold dragons yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. All right. With that being said, I think we can get ready for a long rest. Yes. And before yes. we go, as always, I want to encourage you guys to check out our 5e Live Play Super Quest Saga here on YouTube. Tuck me in Super Quest Saga. On any podcast app you can find, just uh, search Super Quest Saga. And it's just us here playing Future Fantasy D&D, and it's a load of fun. And the story's getting real crazy, and I'm enjoying writing it, and I'm enjoying watching these guys muck about in my galactic universe. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'm a warlock, like I said last time. Indeed. And uh, you can see Jace, Jake Jace, Jake, and Josh uh, play a furball druid and a half-orc paladin. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. One of them's got a robot arm. One oh, of them's yeah. got a bioscanner on their face. It looks like a flower. That's also true. <laughs> um, hey, if you are looking for ad space, we have some. Um, you can hit us up at thedungeoncast at gmail.com. Uh, or I guess like people have been hitting me up on Instagram about that. I don't know if you ever get hit up on Twitter about ads. No, not but, really. Um, yeah. Try to hit us up. Hit us up wherever, really. But the dungeoncast at gmail.com is where we prefer those types of messages to Indeed. go. Indeed. Um, but your feedback about the show, you can direct that there or any of these other platforms. Or you can just tell us a story. I love seeing like stories. Like if you are a, a veteran that and this show helps you, like that just makes my fucking day. 
one hundred percent. Yeah, like we're so happy to <laughs> do this show and to have it have a good effect on <clears throat> on people out there. So thanks for listening. Yeah, all those stories that trickle in are always really heartwarming. So thank you guys for reaching out and letting yeah. us know. We try, to, we respond try to respond to, respond to all those quickly as we can. Yeah, <laughs> we, we've kind of gotten on a more rhythmic pace with that on a week to week basis. Um, but anyway, um, we got our new camera. So thank you to everybody on Patreon. Yeah. Um, I know we have a goal set on there. We're going to change the goals thing around a little bit, but we just kind of saved our pennies and went and got cameras. We think it was a, a big necessity. Indeed. Uh, and I'm loving them so far. We'll see how it goes in post. Mm-hmm. Um, so is there anything else that we need to talk mm-hmm. about before we, we call it? Happy Year of the Dragon, folks. It's been fun. Oh, and, yeah, this was it, huh? And on j- the first episode come next year, I will announce what year. We will be celebrating then. Okay, but Will's going to announce it to me right I mean, after I, I tell hit, Ryan in right like after 10 after seconds I hit, or so. Yeah. yeah, right after I hit the the, the stop recording <laughs> buttons. <laughs> so with that being said, let's call it a game. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Will. I'm Brian. This is a podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, from gallant Goliaths to godly guy. Blah, 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 blah.